Hello everybody, welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. Um, this is my podcast where I talk about my obsessive knitting stuff. Uh, it's usually based on what the current topic of my knitting life is. It's not necessarily finished objects, work in progress, any of that stuff, especially today because I have nothing on my needles. I have zero on my needles. And that is because I finished this sweater. But before we get to that, please like, subscribe, you can follow me on Instagram at Stereo Bait and Ravelry. All information is going to be um, in the description. So I'm not that like, great at editing. So I'm going to go over a lot of patterns and stuff. I'll put all the links in the descriptions. Just click show more and then you can see what I'm talking about. So the reason why I don't have anything on my needles is because I just have this off of my needles. And let me tell you first, if you are sensitive to strong language or you have little ones around, maybe click away for a little bit because this, this is a sweater. This is why I knit. This is why things are, I love this. I'm obsessed. I, I can't even, it's a dream project. So this is the Sabin by Megan Babin in Hudson and West Forge in the color Raven. This is the size 42 and it's fucking amazing. This is why I started knitting. Let me, I'm going to stand up and do a little twirl for you. I have limited space. I'm also wearing yoga pants because I went to yoga this morning. So um, it's an all over cable knit. It's an Aran sweater. You can see there's the same uh, motif on the uh, sleeves as it is on the body. And it's just, it's incredible. It really is just like the most beautiful sweater. It fits amazing. It is incredible. Um, I was going to do the size 46 and I ordered the yarn for the 46 and it was 10 skeins. And I think that the size 42, which is what I knit, is um, nine skeins that you need. But uh, I was going to do the 46 and then go down a needle size so the cables are a little bit tighter and they pill a little less. But then I did my Ryo sweater and it was a 42 and it was actually a little bit large. So I know that cables suck in a little bit. So even the 42 on this, I think, is a little bit slimmer than a 42. Maybe it's just how I blocked it. I don't know. But... Um, this is great. And I knew I would absolutely love it, which I do. And um, I wanted to invest in it. So I did use the recommended yarn for it. It was expensive and I got it on sale and I shipped it to America. So I didn't have to pay the fees and import taxes and everything. So it still cost me like, this is definitely my most expensive. I think it costs like 275 ish um, but it, had I imported it to Amsterdam, it would have been like 400 euros and I, I'm up for a treat yourself sweater. I can't afford that, but yeah, I used some money that my grandma gave me and she's a big knitter. I knit her the Aurora Cabin Shawl later. And, um, yeah. So not only does this fit impeccably, and I followed the pattern almost to a T. The only thing I adjusted is I like a, a neck that's a little bit higher and tighter. So I knit it a little bit longer on a smaller gauge for the neckline. But the rest is like phenomenal. And I was so concerned when I was pulling it out of um, blocking because it like stretched a lot. And I was like, oh no, this is never going to fit. So I scrunched it so the cables would come up. And then... Guys, I, I don't even know. This is... Just absolute favorite. It's a work of art. It is beautiful. It was such a joy to knit. It wasn't too complicated and it flew off the needles. I did this in a month and a half. I did another Aaron sweater before and it <laughs> took me four months. So I don't know what's going on. It's incredible. Um, not only that, but the way she wrote this pattern, it's not like a explain everything pattern, pattern, but it's still like 25 pages. The the way that like the end stitches are worked or like um, like slipping or the cast on for the tubular cast on or like even the math of it, like how the seam up here is like put together and then the number of stitches and stuff, it is impeccably done. It is so well done and so well crafted and the way that the cables go together, it's phenomenal. Like she knows 
her shit and she knows it well. She used to be the editor of Interweave magazine, I believe. And this is so well written um, to the point where I was like, okay, if I have to do modifications, I'm screwed because it it's very complex, but it is just like orchestrated beautifully. So well, I cannot recommend enough this pattern. It is my my absolute favorite. This is a piece I will cherish for forever. I hope I don't gain so much weight. And uh, the yarn is phenomenal with the Forge and the Hudson and West. Go check them out immediately. Um, pause this pro podcast and like talk to them because I I'm I'm obsessed with this. It, it turned out so well, and I'm so happy. And I knew I would love it, and I was hoping that I would love it, and it is phenomenal and it feels great on the skin it's squishy it's beautiful it's like this is why I wanted cable knit sweaters in black when I started knitting and this is phenomenal like I, I just I can't I cannot I cannot I cannot I cannot go look at it fantastic um that being said I have three skeins left over which is a considerable amount I think it's because I purl differently I'm not really quite sure um but the um, sorry, my light just went out. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. I think I need a new light. Um, regardless, uh, I had three skeins left. I was going to do a ret hat, which is like the companion hat to this uh, stitch pattern. It's basically a slightly modified version of this stitch. I don't know if you can see it. It's, I need to blow it out. But um, it's basically like the sleeve pattern over again and a hat. Uh, but I have three skeins left and I'm thinking that I could do something a little bigger, a little bit more special with those. I still might knit the hat out of like another yarn that I have, but in general, um, we're going to hold on that. Although I think it would be beautiful to, can you imagine a matching hat with this matching sweater? I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. It's phenomenal. So, um, this is like a knitting goal for me. And I am so happy that I accomplished it and that I have it and that I get to wear it all of the time. So enough. Um, what I wanted to talk about today is knitting through a stash. We're going to go over some of the yarns that I have and some of the stuff that I have. A couple things to go over is I typically just buy stuff for projects that I already know that I'm going to do. I don't, I'm not a big stasher, but because like this, I have three skeins left over. I have all this stuff in my stash that just needs to go and be put into other things and do other things with. Another thing to note is that I knit what I want to knit. So I don't like gift knit. So I don't like holiday knit. But if I want to knit something like, I don't know, I knit my dad a cardigan. Like I wanted to knit a cardigan and I needed an idea for a sweater and he wanted it. So like we... He picked one out and I did it. Like that's the sort of thing. And I also knit a bunch of stuff to like use up stash and get rid of things basically. And like, that's how it is. I don't take commissions. I don't, you know, feel obligated to give anybody anything. Although my mom does want a color work sweater, but we, I think I have a plan for that, which will come later, later in the year. So I, I just knit what I want. And because I knit what I want, I have a bunch of extra crap. I have an extra like I over order yarn. I have no idea how I do it, but I over order yarn every time and I have a bunch of stuff. So we're going to go over some project ideas that I have and then I have a gift box. And in this box is just shit that I knit that I have no idea what to do with and I'm not going to use it myself. So, and yeah, that's about it. Let's start with some future projects and let's go for there. This is going to be not my next sweater, but a swatch I did um, for the next sweater. I wanted something easy after this one because this is cable I mean, it wasn't difficult, but I want like more mindless knitting. My brother wanted a sweater, so I had, um, I was like, I'm just going to knit you a sweater. I have a sweater's quantity of this Drops Big Merino. In black, I also have it in gray, but I just have scraps in, in gray now. Um, but that's why I did the, the swatch in gray. It's a little easier to use. So I'm going to knit him up a sweater in the sweater's quantity of Drops Big Merino. 
And what I wanted to do is because it's superwash and I don't have a great grasp of superwash. It's not my favorite. I don't think I'll use it again, like maybe for socks, but definitely not for garments. I wanted to knit a swatch with two different gauge, three different gauge needles. So um, I'm gonna say this is like 4.5, 5, and 5.5 millimeters. I'm pretty sure he'll be in between sizes in terms of the pattern. So I did need to figure out my gauge swatching and stuff. And what I wanted to talk about was um, Superwash yarn. What they do for this is they like take all the scales off. So like you've seen a hair close up, it has like little scales on it. They take them off and then they put like resin on everything. And with that resin, it uh, separates the fibers. I'm trying to find a loose piece here. Um, it separates the fibers and what that accomplishes is uh, things don't felt. Things really um, separate. And I'm trying to find a... I had an end earlier. Ah, here we go. Um, so you can see the yarn, it just like doesn't like felt together. Everything is slightly more separated and, and it, it just is a little bit of like a fluffier texture. So what I've done is I did an experiment. I knit this big thing up and I took the gauge beforehand. I took, um, I wet blocked this and let it dry. And then I wet blocked, or then I put it in the washer and the dryer to see what would happen. And the answer is quite a lot. Actually, the yarn moves and behaves differently because it doesn't, because it doesn't felt. It's fine from the dryer, which I was concerned about, but um, yeah, so it had like a, fairly standard gauge thing for based on what it recommends on the tag. When I blocked it and it just wet blocked it and I put it to dry naturally, it expanded a tremendous amount. So the, it was at least one stitch per four inches um, width wise. In some case it was like one and a half. And then the length grew by like four stitches or something in four inches or 10 centimeters. So it really, 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 really expanded. But when I did it again and I put it in the washer and then the dryer, it had a little bit more similar gauge to the actual um, initial gauge swatch that I did. It shifted slightly, like a half, half a stitch um, in terms of the columns and then like up and down the rows, it, it shifted like a couple of stitches. But I think it's important to do that um, just so I could understand like what to expect with this yarn and what I'm knitting up versus what will actually happen because it changes so much and it's so drastic that I wanted to double check. Um, my dad's cardigan, I just wet blocked and it like grew, I think like six inches on the sleeves or something. And that's also part of the reason why I did such a large swatch because often we swatch and if we swatch, it's like this much. And that's not enough to tell how it will expand or change after you block it and then it will drape with a little bit of weight. So this was my superwash experiment. I will use it as a knowledge in learning and then I will do whatever with it. I'm going to knit this one sweater and then the rest is going to be like baby garments maybe or something that I use for the yarn. I have a little bit of gray and I have, I'll have some black left over as well. So that's my superwash journey. And another thing is I have like 61 balls of this cotton yarn. I way over ordered for a blanket that I made my mom. And when I want to use a lot of yarn fast, I crochet and it's a blanket. I, I don't have the patience for lace. I don't have the patience for big shawls. Um, I'm certainly not going to knit a blanket, but I'll crochet one because it goes a lot faster for me. So I'm freestyling this blanket, and this is probably the only time I'm going to show this on the podcast. Um, it's just uh, like a ripple blanket with a little bit of a, a twist, and I'm, you know, knitting however I, or doing however I want. Um, and then we'll see, I'll block it, it will grow a little bit, and I'll just knit it until it's probably bigger than me, and if I have any left over, I'm going to put it in another blanket. So this is my on the side mindless crochet project that I'm going to do. I'm about halfway through and it's quite large and 
it's whatever. So that is my crochet. It's living in my old anthropology store. These are the baskets that the customers would take around with them. And so there's that. Uh, the next thing that I want to say is I have this Ikea thing filled with all of my synthetic yarns and I keep it out here in the bookshelf. All my wool and my natural fibers I keep in the back room and it's sealed because Amsterdam is gross and there are moths and bugs and whatever. It's like no matter what you can do, you can't do it. So synthetic goes out here. I have a bunch, bunch, bunch. I have some... Uh, some sock yarn. There was this whole misorder with this, which I think I might make into a, a vest. I'm not really quite sure. But if I take this all out and make a huge mess over here, you can see I have, well, I have a bunch of swatches as well. I've been swatching a lot lately. I have some ideas and I'm not that great at lace. I'm really not that great at lace. I can do anything else apparently, but like, Lace? It's not happening. This is one of my swatches. I, I mean, you can't even see it that well, but like, if my stitches are off. I don't know what that is. More practice is needed, but I have some good lace ideas coming up. The point being is the rest of this huge box is cozy fine from when I used to be more of a crochet. And I've been picking at this with different, um, different like hats and stuff. And I have so much fit left that I think after the blue blanket, I'm just going to make like a moss stitch crochet blanket and make it like bonkers colors. Each row is a different color and then I'll switch it with contrasting. I have a couple of other things that I can throw into. I have some th synthetic yarn from a, a baby blanket that I made that doesn't go with it. And I can like either hold it double. I'm not so concerned. I think that this is about DK to worsted-ish, like heavy DK, light worsted. And I can either just put in some more DK or worsted or fingering, I'll hold it double and we'll make a big blanket, like a, a big, 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 big blanket. I think it's the plan with that. So I don't know if I'll ever show it, but I have a, like a stash. I mean, it's filled up to here on this huge thing of yarn. And that's how I plan to get rid of it. So there's that. There is Holst. I have a bunch of Holst and I have two cones of black and I have this one cone of natural. You can make like four sweaters out of just one cone. It's crazy. This might turn into a, a flattened Gänse, which uh, Irish at, Irish at the ready, Irish farm art, Sam, is just made with Holst and I have a sweater's quantity worth of the yarn if I make like a black and white one that I could put together and I've been thinking about it. It's an all over color work, very like traditional Norwegian. I don't know if it's quite my style, but I would wear these colors. So I think I'm gonna make it. I've ordered the book and then we'll see what happens with it. But I mean like free yarn, I'm all up for it. Let's make it. We have some boucle that I ordered. I dropped, it's just drops alpaca boucle. It's a unicolor. It's, I don't know what color this is. It's just like their undyed one. Color 100, no information. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to do with boucle and I wanted to try it. I thought it sounded really cool. So I think I'm gonna make a balaclava out of this. I obviously need to start something soon. I have the sweater that I'm going to start. I think this next week I have to go to Portugal for work and this might be like my plane and like after work knitting in the hotel and I think I want to make a balaclava out of this so I bought like four of these little balls to do that because I also bought some like lightish yarn for swatching and I figured I'd throw this in the cart because I wanted to do it. So that's the plan for this alpaca balaclava and right now I'm just going through my stash and like telling you some like things that have assigned plans. There's a whole lot more because I over ordered yarn, but we're getting there. We have next. I made a previous slutty, slutty summer sweater out of this and it's a Go Handmade Tinsel Bamboo Fine. 
and I was like, oh, summer knitting, you know, a nice bamboo sort of thing. You can see it's really splitty, especially maybe down there. It's really splitty. It's very drapey. It has a nice sheen to it. Uh, it's shit for garments. I would not use, especially like a tensile, it's so drapey. I didn't know this because I started knitting like in June and I ordered this in like November and I'd made like two sweaters at that point. Um, no garments, but this would make a great Sophie scarf, I think. I have enough for a couple of Sophie scarves and I think it'd be good mindless knitting and it would use it and it would be like a beautiful drape with it. So that's the plan. And I'm gonna just like, I think I'm gonna knit two with these held together because I think it's a worst weight pattern. So uh, these held together, I'll make like the large one and then I'll make another one until I run out of the yarn. And I think that that will be a good one and that will go in my little box. Very excited about that because I think it's just gonna be fun and easy. We have Drops Nepal. This is one of those things where I ordered a sweater's quantity of this. This is a wool and alpaca. Um, it's a worsted weight, although they said it might be Aaron. It's 35% wool, or 65% wool and 35% alpaca. You knit it on five millimeter needles. I have an idea for this, which is like, a lace winter sweater where it's like the alpaca will have a little bit of a drape and a little bit of an opening up but it will still be like wool so it'll be thick and then i just make some sort of like drop shoulder design with like a really pretty lace pattern but like make it masculine this is one of the things that i'm swatching for that i'm really not getting but um it's there it's there and we'll think about it but that's this is reserved for that and we're gonna make it happen. It might be a next, next fall in the winter. I'm not really quite sure. I think the next, I think the next part, next fall and winter, I wanna do my mom's sweater and I wanna do this. And then I have all these ideas for bloody summer sweaters and I wanna do those. So that's what I'm swatching for now. And I'll knit through my stash because obviously I have a lot of it. I'll knit through my stash um, as I get things and, and do whatever, and yeah, um, but I don't really have a whole lot of acquisitions coming in, although in Portugal there's that store that sells Mundi, Rosario Pumar? Maybe. I'm sure, don't yell at me if I got the name wrong, but the manufacturer is beautiful, and I went to a friend's house, and he had some Mundi, and I was like, I need this in my life, and I want to make some traditional, like, Norwegian minnens out of it, I'm not sure about color work in a small circumference. I'm talking about all these color work projects. I'm not a great fan of color work. I prefer something like this, but that's what's in my head. We're getting it out. So we're gonna do lace, we're gonna do color work. We're gonna do a lot of blankets and we're gonna see. Uh, this is part of my let's knit stupid stuff that brings me joy and like tear it all out and do it anything. I have to work today. Work is very demanding. It's a new job. It's not hard, but it, it, there's a lot of it. And I'm just not gonna knit everything and I've accepted that. I've brought this into my body. I brought it into my psyche and we're going to do things. And I have a lot of stuff around me that will bring me joy and I can get done already. And we can experiment and we can do different things with and we'll, we'll figure something out. But like, really, what do I wanna do? I wanna do stupid stuff. I wanna do like fun stuff. I wanna knit for people who are very knit worthy and bring some joy. And then if I have a really cool idea, I want to do that. So that's part of that. Speaking of which, this. Mr. Does Knitting picked this out for his vest, the little like white mohair stripes. And I have uh, two of these left. Um, it's, I didn't use very much. And I want to make a electric purple mohair jock strap. I don't know how it's gonna happen. It's probably gonna be about 20 prototypes. I'll probably do it in fingering weight before I do it in mohair. I'm gonna figure out how to make a goddamn jack strap and then I'm gonna make it in electric purple mohair because that is ridiculous. And this is what that is reserved for, like without a doubt. And I'm very excited to sit down and figure that out. It can't be too hard, famous last words. And then last but not least is my Rowan Felta tweed. Now this has, this is in the color black and this is what I have left over. 
I've, I've actually like three balls of this left over. Once again, I buy too much. I don't know. But this has been shouting at me to be a pair of like DK yoga socks. So I think I have never knit socks. And part of the reason why is because I think it's too fiddly, maybe. I don't know. I like a, a big garment. But also, I like would never wear them. I have very specific rules for my wardrobe. And one of them is I have one type of sock and that's it. And then they, they pair with all the other socks. They're all like generic, you know, fast fashion, and they're all the same, and I bought the same for the same, for like a bajillion years, and that's how it goes. So introducing a new one into it would throw me off. But if I use these specifically for yin yoga, then I think I might, that might work out. And I just want to knit like a ribbed, just like three by one-ish ribbed DK sock and see what happens. So that's what this is going to turn into, possibly fairly soon. And I think... Those are my immediate plans with my stash. Let's go into the box. So I have this box of stuff that I want to give away. And we'll go over some things. Hold on one second. Let me ugh, open her up. Okay. First things first. I have a baby blanket. It's just a waffle stitch baby blanket that I made up. And I've had a couple of, like, people have babies. I'm in my mid-30s. You know, people we know that have, have babies. So I, this was another project that I bought a bunch of yarn for. It was going to be, like, a long-term project while I was, like, in between jobs or something. And that just never happened. And then I also hated the project. So I knitted up. This is the, I did two baby blankets and then, like, one larger blanket out of it. And then this is the one that's left. And so that's what's happening with that. There's a baby shower next weekend. So I get to de-stash this and it will be great. To go along with that baby shower, uh, I also have taken a bunch of the Cozy Fine and I'm, most of these hats are Cozy Fine, by the way. But uh, I found this gray that I had and I knit this baby hat. It's a newborn hat. This will go along with the baby blanket. Um, it's for a boy. There is an option. This is, well, this is the School Run hat by Penrose Knits. It is my favorite baby hat because I think it looks so damn cute. And then you can put little pom-poms on here. It's like little baubles. And it's adorable. It's crazy. And I think that, yeah, everybody should do this for children. So I have this that will, you know, took me an afternoon. And I'll put it in and we'll give it away. Free net, used up my stash. People love it. It's great. And I'm going to take a drink of some decaf coffee that I have. The person on this cup is the former Queen of England. It was a gift to Mr. Does Knitting when he moved to the Netherlands, so he didn't forget his homeland. But I have commandeered this mug, and it's now my coffee cup. Fantastic. More stuff. Let's go through this bag. Um, this is a We Are Knitters in Ochre. It's a self-designed pattern that I need to write up. I've started. I just need to do it. Maybe that's a good one for my work trip. This one you've seen at the beginning. This is the Lion Brand piece that I wanted to do. So I made it into a cowl. This is basically one big thing of um, Lion Brand, and I did it off the Koishvan colorway. Koishvan, oh, Jesus Christ. I did this with Lion Brand oatmeal, and I did it off the Strict Cafe's Koishvan sweater pattern, and I think it turned out lovely. I really liked using this yarn. It's very rustic. It's incredibly affordable. I think I got this for like eight euros or eight dollars maybe at Joann's. And it knit up wonderfully. It doesn't have a ton of stitch definition. The stitch definition for this really comes from the pattern itself uh, that I just made up. Uh, so this isn't really like anything on offer, but you can hack it for sure. But uh, it really turned out beautiful. It's soft, it's cozy. I haven't even blocked it. I'm sure it will bloom nicely. And I'm quite happy with it. I think that 
if you're in America and you can get your hands on this and you need a rustic yarn for some simple color work or just like a top down raglan or something simple like a boyfriend sweater, this is a great way to go. Uh, it's not the best yarn to work with. It's a little splitty, but in general, it was fine. And I really liked it. I tried it both on my Eddie Clicks and my Chow Goos and it worked great. And I was quite pleased with it. So highly recommend this yarn. It was new to me. And yeah, if it if it fits what you're you're going for for your knitting, highly recommend. Let's get into hats. I made a couple of hats. And I made this many hats. So we have train hats from everywhere and I'm just going to like boom 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 through these. Uh, let's see, let me try to group these into something, if I can figure out how to. Okay, these, is in gray, this is in yellow, these are cozy fine, I don't know the colorways. This is the hat that I got off of Brooklyn Tweed, I will put the name uh, below. This is like the first hat pattern that I had that I knitted, second one maybe. It's really cool. I really like it. It has different um, cabling, like one by one, two by two, like three by one, different little things. These look great. They're easy to knit up. So I have a couple of those. I have this one, which was a test that I did to see if I could like write and publish this as a pattern that matches that cowl that I showed earlier. This is in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, which I would love a sweater for of these. I think this is a rust colorway. This is an amazing yarn. It's not as soft as you would think with like heavy merino, but it would make like a great like oversized sweater, something so cozy and comfortable. I really want to see if I can swing that if I have like a good idea and stuff. I don't think that this pattern is going to be released, maybe. I mean, it could be. The problem is, is this is fairly straightforward, but the, the, um, like the decreases up here, it's a little bit complicated and I'm not exactly sure how to explain. And I think if people are just knitting a hat that they want something easy and they would get to the crown of this and be like, fuck this, <laughs> it's turning into a cowl. That's my, um, assumption, but I could be wrong. If you would like this pattern, let me know. But with the folded twisted rib, I thought it looked really beautiful. And I think I would knit one of these hats for myself. I certainly will use Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino again because I think it would be an amazing yarn. And yeah, we'll see if this goes anywhere or not. But regardless, it's a giveaway hat now and it's fine. We have assorted two by two hats. Here. This is the Cozy Fine. I don't know what pattern this is. This was a top-down one with the extra We Are Knitters. It's my first top-down hat, but it was really good because I just did the crown like one night and then I could knit the rest on the train and then I just knit until the skein was used. So that was that. That was nice. I think I'll do that more often. It's a worsted weight pattern that I found for free somewhere on the internet. It's great. And it, and it has like a nice, I love a two by two ribbed hat. It's my favorite one. I really think it's nice. So there's that. Um, this is the bottom up one. This one is, this one's based off of James and Watts's color quadrant hat, but I didn't want to do intarsia. I just really like the decreases. Can you even see that? Is it blown out? Is it not blown out? So I just modified it to be in the round so I could do the decreases. I thought this was really nice. I have another one. Yes, I have one more of those here. And when I modified the decreases, it became a bit narrow, but I like it. So I, that's good. This one came from, uh, this is in Cozy Fine in some pink. This was from a Pom Pom Magazine book that I got when I first started knitting. So this is really old. And then I have, 
I swear I'm almost done. I have Oslo hats. So the easiest hat for me to knit is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. And one great thing about that is, is it's a yarn guzzler because it has like a folded, I'll just show you. So it has like a folded neck frame. How you knit is like, you, you knit, you fold over, and then you like actually fold the, the hat. I changed the way I decreased slightly and just because I liked it a little bit different, but in general, I follow roughly the same patterns, the same measurements uh, every time. So this is a great train knitting hat because it's all just stuck in that. There's not even ribbing. It's in the round. It's super simple. It's just like knit, 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 knit. And then, I mean, you can memorize this. So you don't even need to like figure out what the increase is. You can just like go for it. You don't need a pattern. So I've knit that in this pink. I've knit it in this yellow. I have a double green. How fancy is this? This is beautiful. This was uh, last time I went to the UK, I made this one. And I have this like obnoxious like Dutch hat is what I'm calling it. Uh, just to use up these colors and quantities. I even used up an, an additional red. Um, it's kind of stupid. I mean, it's a really big hat, but I like it. And so that's my Oslo hat adventure. Okay, we're almost done. So those are all of my thousand hats that I knit on the train when I was uh, working far away. We have two more items. Let's go for it. This one's like one of the first blankets that I crocheted. This is a beautiful mosaic knit blanket. This is one of the first blankets that I crocheted. So this is a modification on the Nordic Lights blanket from Yarnspirations. And it has this, and then I switched it into different colors. Nobody wants this, but it's in my giveaway thing. Um, and I think it's really pretty. I really like it. This is an amazing pattern if you're more of a crocheter to get into. It was free. I knit this probably about four or five different times. It's so much fun. And it, I think mosaic knitting and crochet, mosaic crochet is really beautiful. And I just can't get enough of this pattern. It's pretty simple and I would recommend. So there's this that also needs to be given away. This is all in the cozy fine. Yeah, like it. Now, one other thing, and the last one, is my nightbook sweater. And I know what you're thinking, and the answer is yes, this is incredibly beautiful, but I'm never going to wear it. I just don't, I don't wear color. I just don't. And I knit this and I was like, oh, I'll have one piece of color in my wardrobe and I'll wear it sometimes and it will be fun. And I, I, I can't do it. Um, it's knit out of, the top is Bicycle, the, the neckband, and then this by Stephen West and West Wool. And then the rest is just holst and part of that cone that I showed you. It's a beautiful sweater. It's by Rachel Easley of Unwind Knitwear. And she has a bunch of um, Stranded Colorwork stuff based on music. And I think it's... I did like a test knit for her for this, for like beginners test knitting and to like see how her patterns went. I, this was my first ever color work. I think it turned out all right. The only problem is I went up like 12 needle sizes to get gauge. And so the the row gauge is so far off. It is so off, but the, the width is fine. Um, but I made it work for me. Also the sleeves, um, because the row gauge was a little bit off, the sleeves do something funny at the end. Uh, Anyway, it, it's not it's not something I would wear, but it was an idea that I had and I wanted to do and I wanted to execute. And uh, this is what happened. So this is a giveaway. I have since gotten measurements from all of my family and for I have my boyfriend and me. And if I want to knit a sweater and I have an idea, then I can say, do you want this in these colors? And then they can say yes or no. And if the answer is no, then I will find somebody else. If the answer is yes, then I know what size to make and who to give it to and everything. And 
Yeah, so I mean, like, this is a really nice sweater. I really like it. I just am never gonna wear it. I'm never gonna wear it. And I think the whole thing cost me, because I mean, the West Pool was a little bit more expensive, but it cost me like 50 euros or something. It wasn't bad. And it's like, I know the way people price these out or justify things in their mind, I don't know. I did this mostly in the holes because it was affordable and I knew that I wouldn't get much use out of it. But Holst is a really good yarn. I really like it and I will use it more. So I'm not mad about that. Uh, I'm sort of like, all right, I pay for both the project and like a craft to keep me busy. But then I also like pay for the garment. And so it's like if, you know, this sweater kept me busy for a month and a half. And, you know, that was like worth X amount. And then, you know, if I were to buy this in a store, it would cost me like 80, 90 euros, might be synthetic, uh, that sort of thing. So justify it however you want. I sort of am like, let's not blow the bank on everything, but knit something that you enjoy. And sometimes you have to treat yourself and sometimes you can go more affordable. And that's why I think like, especially with Holst, if I knit that flat and against there in this, this is like, free yarn because I bought it for other things and um, I bought this one for this and I bought this one for my Christmas sweater and it was like these were like 25 euros a piece it wasn't very much money and now I have like a whole sweater that I can make out of it or multiple sweaters out of this stuff so it's it's worth it things go things come if you knit from your stash it's great we've gone over a lot I talked a lot. I, my room is a complete mess because it's trashed with yarn and objects and a thousand hats and blankets and everything. And this is the chaos of my life. So welcome. I appreciate that you've been here. What else is there? I mean, that's a lot of knitting talk without actually showing much like knitting. I have nothing on my needles. I think I'm going to cast on maybe like the Sophie scarf maybe the socks and i'm not really quite sure what i'm gonna do next but obviously there are options around and easy things to get and easy things to start so we can just start cranking out we can start cranking out some things and it will be nice oh i, I can start the sweater today that would be great start the sweater do like a sophie scarf is more of a mindless knit fantastic that will keep me busy for a while and then we can you know next week do something else and whatever this is my knitting chaos. What is happening with the rest of everything? Like I said, I have a new job and it's quite time intensive. It's not necessarily so difficult, but it's time intensive. And um, like I have to work later today. So I'm trying to get this over with while there's still some daylight. And I am just not gonna be able to do a bunch of stuff. I have not next week, but the week after in Lisbon for the event. So I don't know if I'll get any knitting done. It, probably not. Not much. I'll probably get some, but not much. And I think that that's just going to be how it's going to be. Just a little slower, unfortunately, and fewer things. But it's all right. I think it's a really enjoyable job. We have a cool event. I will share some stuff on social media if I can. I believe during the event or after the event. I can share some stuff. That's really cool. What else? I don't have a whole lot else going on. I'm just doing some yoga, trying to find a new routine, trying to find some time to knit and enjoying this new job. Um, I am also doing a lot of like swatching for stuff. I'm doing a lot of like submissions. I have a, there are a couple of magazine submissions that I've been playing around with. So those projects I don't think are going to really turn into anything showable for a while if the submissions are put in or, you know, my swatches because I just, I need to refine it and I need to play around with some ideas. So I will be toiling in the background and knitting a lot regardless, but what comes up here, I don't know. I don't know. 
So thank you so much if you made it this long into this rambling and this throwing around of garments and yarn podcast today. There have been a lot of new viewers and some subscribers, and I really appreciate you all watching my videos, especially the ones with the Aurora cabin shawls seem to be very popular. And I hope you stay here. I hope you enjoy. I hope you interact and we can talk about a bunch of stuff and just enjoy the craft of knitting and everything as we go along. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about it. I'm quite the nerd and I'm excited to get more into it. Hope you all are well and enjoying yourselves and I will see you later. Bye.